Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are very excited to celebrate the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with Mari Copany, also known as Little Miss Flint. Thank you for joining us, Mari, today. So I'm Sherry Nataro, and I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the Institute for Social Research at the University of Michigan. I'll be your host for today's webinar. And I want to thank the communications team as well as the MLK planning committee for helping me execute our MLK commemoration events. So we have a few housekeeping items to share with you. Uh, today's presentation will feature live captioning uh, and it will be recorded. And after Mari's presentation, I'll pose some of your questions to her. So you may submit those questions using the QA feature at the bottom of your screen. So now I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about Mari and some of the impactful work that she's been doing. When Mari was eight years old, she wrote a letter to former President Barack Obama to draw attention to the Flint water crisis in her hometown. Her letter prompted a response from the president where he shared that letters from kids like you are what make me so optimistic about the future. In 2016, President Obama visited Flint to see firsthand the devastation caused by the lead poisoned water supply. That visit resulted in the declaration of a federal state of emergency and contributed to a nationwide awareness of the city's critical situation. President Obama eventually authorized $100 million to fix the crisis. Now seven years into the crisis, measures have been taken to help eradicate the problem, but effects continue to be felt by Flint's residents and necessary repairs to infrastructure are still ongoing. In addition to her efforts to supply clean water to the residents of Flint, Mari continues to serve as a champion to those in her community and beyond. Through partnerships with nonprofit organizations, Mari raises money, to help youth and spread encouragement and a message of empowerment. So welcome Mari and thank you again for celebrating with us today as we mark this legacy of MLK. So we'd like to hear from you now. Okay, well thank, thank you for having me. You're welcome. I start now? Okay. Um, okay. Water. For most, it's always there. Turn on the tap to get a drink brush your teeth, make a pitcher of lemonade, to run a bubble bath, to fill water balloons, and to cook with. There is never any question about if it's safe. That's because there are systems in place to make sure that it is. But sometimes those systems fail and you end up with a crisis that affects the most basic human necessity. And when that happens, your life drastically changes. My name is Mari. I'm a 13-year-old kid from Flint, Michigan. People around the world know me as Little Miss Flint, even though I'm not so little anymore. When I was six years old, a water crisis began inside my hometown. The water that was coming from our taps was not safe. In some homes, it was more toxic than toxic waste. At my house, the water smelled funny, and if you stayed in the bath too long, you would get a rash that resembled chemical burns. My little sister ended up with rashes so bad, she had to have a special ointment and be wrapped in plastic wrap at night to try to heal her skin. When we could no longer brush our teeth or drink any water from the tap, and my siblings, we couldn't... We could no longer brush our teeth or drink any water from the tap, and my siblings and I no longer were able to take bubble baths. All around the city, my water was causing issues. Lots of kids ended up with lead poison, and the water was killing people. As you could imagine, this was scary. As a kid, it was hard. It, as a kid, it was hard to understand how the water got so bad, and why my adults weren't fixing it. And honestly, I really, really miss being able to take a bubble bath. Since the adults didn't seem to be listening to each other, I decided maybe they would listen to a kid. Back then, my mom thought I was crazy. And to be honest, I still believe she thinks I'm out of my mind most days. But she let me take the lead. And that's exactly what I did. 
we started going out to marches in protest, even when it was 20 degrees outside and there was snow up to my knees. I started speaking up and doing whatever I could to get people to listen to me. And FYI, it's really hard to make adults listen to you when you're a kid and they think that you have no idea what you're talking about. We got a chance to go to Washington, D.C. for the congressional hearings of the Flint water crisis. A couple of days before leaving, I asked my mom if we could send a letter to President Obama. I knew there was no way he would even read the letter, let alone respond, but I wanted to try anyways. That trip came and went. Then a couple months later, my mom got a call from a block number. Turns out President Obama was, had read my letter, and not only was he going to write back, he was going to come to Flint and visit me firsthand. Suddenly, everyone wanted to hear what I had to say, and I made sure to use that platform to do as much good as I could. Giving back has always been something that has come second nature to me. All my life, I have been raised to give back to my community. When I was little, I spent a lot of my time with my grandma volunteering at the local food bank. During the holidays, my family would make up boxes of essential, essentials and gifts for local families in need. So when the water crisis in Flint began, it was only natural to do what I could to give back. We started helping out pass out water and other supplies to Flint residents. The bigger my platform, the bigger I, the bigger my platform became, the more I was able to give back. Every time I saw a need in the community, I made sure to do whatever I could to make sure that that need was met. What what started one year as a challenge to fill the fill. 50 backpacks for local kids had turned, had, has turned and then be given out over 17,000 fully stocked backpacks. I have also given away thousands of books for authors and characters of color to kids locally because every child deserves books where they can see themselves represented. During the holidays, I throw huge holiday parties including real reindeer, bounce houses, a hot cocoa bar, and of course, thousands of toys for the kids to pick from. When... When I saw many area kids were walking to school without coats, I organized a coat drive and I had given over 1,000, given over 1,000 coats. I have a letter project called Dear Flint Kids that has gotten over thousands of letters of positive affirmations to Flint Kids from all over the world. I, I started I started that project so kids can know that they are not forgotten and that they are loved. In April of 2018, when the state decided it was no longer wanting to fund the water sites for residents to get clean water, I stepped up and raised money to be able to give away water to the residents that depended on the bottled water. I was able to raise over $250,000 and ultimately I gave away over a million bottles of water in about a year. The lines were always long with many showing up hours early to make sure that they were able to get bottled water. The bottled water was a lifeline for people, no matter how inconvenient it was, but the amount of plastic waste coming out the Flint, coming out of Flint from bottled water was hurting our environment. So I reached out to a company and, and, and working with the team, we came up with my very own fil water filter, a filter that gives out immediate solution to people dealing with toxic drinking water. One that takes bottled water out, the, out of the equation and allows people to know that they are not at risk of running out of bottled water or having to worry about how they are going to be able to afford bottled water. I've raised $400,000 to help fund these filters and they are being shipped all over the country because unfortunately toxic drinking water is not the problem that is unique to Flint. It is actually a problem that is nationwide with millions of U.S. dealing with toxic drinking water. By now you're probably thinking, how is this kid able to pull this off? Well, once President Obama came to Flint, I used that attention to build on it and I just never stopped. I used that 15 minutes of fame to make sure that people would never forget about Flint. At one time, I would have to try my hardest to get the attention of politicians and celebrities to see if they would help. Now they are the ones to reach out to me. And if a little black girl from Flint, Michigan can do as can do can do so much to help her community, so can you. I have learned a lot these past I have learned a lot the past few years, and I want to share it with you. You don't have to wait until you grow up to change the world. There is no time better than the present to get work to get to get to work people are going to doubt you and criticize you ignore them in time you are proving them all wrong use the platform you have to lead with 
self-love. And the world is so full of cruel and hateful people. You don't have to be one of them. Use your platform and use the, use the platform you have to build movements and lift others up. I have a lot from Flint and what happened here. Environmental racism is real. And it's an issue we need to tackle head on. Too many kids are growing up in communities where the environment around them is damaging their health health and well and well-being. From toxic water to toxic air. Every kid every kid deserves to grow up without having to worry that their surroundings can kill them. Let poison affects kids in their entire life. Asthma can slow can slow any kid down from just being the kid. It is going to take a lot of work to fix to fix all the, the problems. But it's not impossible. I'm Mari, I'm a 13 year old kid from Flint out to save the road. Vote for my president in 2044. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mari, for sharing so much of your background and what you've been up to. So I know that there are folks out here are so, so anxious to ask you some questions. So I'm going to take a look at our Q&A and see what might be in there. OK. Ah, I see one, uh, Mari, that's pretty interesting here. So let's see what you think about this. What advice do you have for parents on ways to encourage their kids to get involved in positive activism? When, when kids want to be activists, just let them. Don't try to stop them. Don't try to bring them down. Just let them do what they need to do and support them. Got to support them. Okay, great answer. So Mari, when you were thinking about, you know, writing your letter to President Obama, you know, you said your mom was a little bit um, questioning about whether that was going to get a response. You know, how did you get the courage up to write a letter to the president? Because I really wanted to meet him and just tell him about what was going on here inside Flint. So I decided, let's write him a letter to see if he's going to respond to me. Excellent. Do you remember where you were when you got the letter back from him? Yeah, do you remember? Yeah, I, I remember. I was I was inside third grade at the time, so I was inside school. You know, I was inside my classroom doing my little math homework, packet, whatever. You, you know, stuff like that. I was doing my work. All of a sudden, my mother comes. Like, I see her, because the, the door was open, but, like, the little window thingy, like, thingy was, like, the curtains wasn't, like, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, I seen her, and she, I was, like, oh, she's probably either going to pick me up or she's probably checking on me. No, a whole bunch of other people, with, like, cameras and and news people walked in behind her and i was like oh, hold up hold up what's going on hold, hold up hold, pause what's going on and then uh, <laughs> and then um no she like walked over to me and then she was like da -da 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 -da. she was like so mari president mama wants to meet you and i was like what I, I was very confused she had told me and then like she started reading off the letter or whatever i was like oh and everybody around me was like what 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 wait what and I, I remember one person saying that's no fair and i remember my teacher being like he he was very shook he school was thought they were being yeah the school thought they were being pranked but no and then like the day after that people like i was on the bus and people were like sit next to me or be my new friend or do this or do that it's like okay okay <laughs> well that's awesome it sounds like those are good memories mario have for a lifetime yeah. Awesome. Uh, we have another question here for you. So I don't know if you thought too much about your future there plans, Mari, but somebody wants to know, oh, what do you plan to do after high school and what might you see as your career? College, but after that, um, animation and voice acting. And the president, of course. Of course, all right. Those are good ambitions. So you said animation. Yeah. Yeah. Are you working with that right now? Sort of, but like I kind of stopped because it got really hard. Yeah, but I but I do draw though. I do a lot of drawing, but like yeah, but I do want to get into like more animation. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. One one question we have here for you is how do you balance going to school with all your activism? Well, see, I don't like going to real life school anymore since you know covid and all that so i do online school but like my online school is like you know pretty basic pretty easy you know throughout the day you just either stay inside one spot or move spots and then just 
go on Zoom and go on Canvas, Canvas and do the work, and then done for the day. But like it's kind of but like it like balances out what I do activism and all that and stuff like that. Yeah, very convenient. Oh, okay, so maybe that's helped you a little bit being uh, online instead of having to go into person. Yeah. Cool. Okay, great. Uh, we've got a question from an eight-year-old. He wants to know, where did you get all the bottles of water for Flint? So I ended up raising money to Oh, sorry. I, okay, so I ended up raising money to get all the bottles of water for Flint. How did you raise money? It did a GoFundMe. And I shared it through my social medias. Ah, great. So for kids out here wondering how they can get involved in something in their community, how hard is it to set up a GoFundMe? It's super easy to set up a GoFundMe. You just, you just, you just need an adult to help you with it, though. All right, somebody wants to know, Mari, I know, who is your motivation? You mentioned your grandma. Are there are other folks who motivated you to do this type of service? Okay, so like, my other motivation was just like the kids. Yeah, that was that, yeah. The kids, cause like, seeing them smile when I used to like the giant events in like, doing all that kind of like motivated me motivated me to like go on and to keep on doing what I'm doing because you know kids matter all the kids matter absolutely all right somebody wants to know um how do you pick which projects you want to focus your time on um I go with the season to like if it was summer, I would do, like, a giant summer party. If it was back to school, I would do backpacks. If it was Christmas, like, slash winter time, you know, I'll do Christmas. If it was Halloween, I'd do passing out candy. You know, it just, it just, it honestly just depends. If it was, if it was spring, I'd do, like, Easter egg hunts or stuff like that. You know, it just, it just honestly depends. Okay, so you use the calendar there and what's going on in the, in the world to help you out. Yeah. Very organized approach. Uh, okay, somebody wants to know, how do kids your age react to what you're doing to your service and activism? They think I'm, so, they think I'm a celebrity. And honestly, I just see myself as like a normal kid doing big things. I don't really like, I sort of see myself as a celebrity. Like, it's not like a, well, it's not like one of those, oh my God, that's, yeah, I don't, like, yeah. It's, it's yeah. It, it, it's hard to explain. Okay, so you're pretty down to earth then, huh? Of course. Awesome. Uh, okay, so somebody says um, they want to give you some props. They said you're super awesome, and I can't believe we're the same age. Uh, and then they said, how do you get the attention of people who can listen to you so you can make a change? I have a big mouth, so I don't shut up. So that's kind of how I get the attention. That's kind of how I get the attention. I, I also hijack hashtags. So like, if it was like a trending hashtag, I'm like, like, okay. So basically, if like if MAGA like slash like Trump was trending, I would end up I would end up posting something under that hashtag that wasn't related to that, and that's like gains the traction of like people. You know, you gotta like hijack very trendy hashtags and then you get the attention of a whole bunch of new people oh so hijacking a hashtag okay i'm learning a lot from you mari <laughs> awesome all right um somebody wants to know mari given how busy you are what do you do to just kind of relax and make sure you don't get you know too stressed out i like okay so i draw I skateboard even though it's like snowy outside, but like, yeah, I skateboard, I sleep, I uh, listen to music, I uh, I watch anime, um, I play video games, I practice on my guitar a lot, I, um, um, I watch YouTube, um, you watch I watch a lot of YouTube, um, you I read, but sometimes. Well, sometimes, sometimes I read. Um, so I talk to my friends a lot. Um, I scroll on TikTok for a maximum hours a day. But better be resting when I say that I've been on TikTok for twelve hours 
plus more literally every single day. It doesn't stop. What are you proud of that? Or that? I'm very proud of that. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so you've got a maximum on your TikTok, huh, from mom. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's the, yeah, it, it just never stops. I'm just always scrolling through TikTok. She, but she does, in fact, scroll on TikTok, too. Every single day, she be having a full blast volume just so I can hear it in the other room, watching TikToks on her For You page and saying, Mari, come do this TikTok or do that TikTok. <laughs> okay, got it. You mentioned books, Mari. Can you maybe give us a recommendation of one of your favorite books? What's the one? Okay, so like this one book, I have like three books I can recommend. So like one book, it's called Con. No, one of them is called Concrete Roses. It's by the same author that made The Hate You Give, Angie Thomas. Um, another book would be uh March the March series by by they're right here by um what's his name. Andrew Ada. Andrew Ada. Ada. Yeah, the Mark series. Um. Um. Also, the Hate You Gives, of course. Um. Then, like some of like the the uh fun type would have to be Finding Mighty by I don't know her name, but like the things of like Cherry something, and then the Sailor Moon manga series. Okay. Thank you for those recs. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's literally right here. <laughs> All right, since we are in the pandemic and so much is uh, virtual these days, somebody wants to know what are good ways to volunteer during this pandemic? Share and GoFundMes um, and, and, and tweeting stuff and like posting stuff, so like tweeting stuff on social media to raise awareness. Yeah, you can collect. You can collect things too, like books and all that, and then like drop them off to people. That's yeah. That's what I. That's what I've been doing. Oh, okay. You've been dropping off, uh, coach. You said and raising awareness for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, somebody wants to know. What's your advice for students who feel like their issue might be too small to get noticed or maybe it's not covered in the media? How do they make the world take notice? Any issue is important. So just like keep on. Like right now you're fighting the school to wear it Oh yeah, I'm fighting my school. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, just basically fight, fight my school to suspend, to uniform. suspend uniforms because we don't have to worry because I don't think parents should have to worry about uniforms and all that if we're gonna be if we're gonna be in school for probably like two for only like two days throughout the week for like a for like a couple months I don't understand because my school is all uniforms but we don't need uniforms during this COVID pandemic thingy like that if we're gonna make us go back to school that's a big no no but like yeah okay so that's an issue that's really important to you on a yeah. local level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, there's another young person in here who says she's also 13 and um, they've started a, a petition for a Ruth Bader Ginsburg monument in Washington, D.C. And how would you recommend uh, getting more people to learn and sign the petition? Send it to me and I tweet it. By the way, my uh, Twitter is Little Miss Flint. Yes, Little Miss Flint. And if you don't have Twitter, then just like send it to me on like Instagram. And my Instagram is the same as my Twitter, Little Miss Flint. Just send it to me and I'll boost it for you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> that is terrific. You are definitely an influencer. Yeah. Okay. Somebody wants to know, Mari, what would you say the hardest part is about being a young activist? Oh. <laughs> Um, okay, so there's a lot of um, hard parts of being a young activist. I think the one, the, okay, the, the one, the, the one thing, 
the one recurring thing is older men, preferably, I, I'm sorry, but preferably older Caucasian men. They always think they're in the right for some odd reason when I'm talking about something, saying that I'm like I'm doing this wrong, I'm not spitting facts. Well, I'm literally spitting the most facts that they will ever spit in their entire life. So, like, the ones that don't like to listen are the, always the ones that are always trying to bring me down or trying to say that, call me slurs and do all this. But then they they do this all over the internet, but then they they know dang well they, if they were to see in person, they would, they would never, they would never call me a slur do, or say any of the things they say inside social media in my face inside real life. But that's just how they are, I guess. So you keep a pretty positive attitude then. Yeah. I kind of have to. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, somebody wants to know, what's your favorite subject in school? None. <laughs> Honestly, okay, I used to have a favorite subject, and that would be science, because I remember wanting to do, like, chemistry, like, chemistry, chemistry. I remember I wanted to blow things up. But, like, I couldn't, because, you know, COVID hit, but, like, I will say that science would have to be one of my favorite ones because I remember back inside school we do all bunch of experiments and I remember I almost set the school on fire. But we don't talk we don't we don't we don't we don't talk about that little incident that almost happened. Because yeah, but like science was like one of my favorite ones, but like, I honestly don't have like a favorite subject since everything's online, you can't really do anything because it's just it's like it's not the same as honestly like really boring. I hate social studies though. I, I truly do hate social studies. That's one that's one thing I would never like in my entire life is social studies. I I hate the way it's taught, especially when it comes around Black History Month too and all that. I just I hate the way they I I'm sorry I I'm sorry, but I hate the way that schools teach us the whitewashed history behind slavery and all that for Black History Month. I honestly, I don't like it. I wish they would change it, but they don't want kids learning the truth, especially when they teach these the younger kids, younger than me. First grade, all they teach younger kids the whitewashed history, then then they wonder why, and then half these kids wonder why when they grow up, they learn about the actual history, they're like, wait, that's true, we didn't get taught this back inside school, because it's all whitewashed history that we don't, that all we do is get taught is whitewashed history, it, just, it never stops. Every single year, new grade, whitewashed history. For Black History Month, it's all whitewash history. They never want to teach us about the real history behind the behind Black people and all. They they never want to teach us all that real history. And so I, I always I'm gonna breathe. I am breathing. All right, I'm done. Okay, I'm I'm done on that. Yeah, I'm good. I had I had to let all my anger on that one. I see that. I'm good. You're very I'm passionate good. about that, yeah. Amari. Yeah, so how have you learned about history? What what other sources have you found to learn about history? Um I learn okay, so like I have a lot of like friends that like well, like a lot, a lot of mentors that like know about this stuff. So like I should've like learned from them. Also learn from the internet too. But not YouTube, because I don't. I'm, I'm. I can only trust the black YouTube channels that that do like history like that. But like, okay, I can't trust any of the YouTube channels. I like. <laughs> yeah, I can't really trust YouTube though. But like, gotta trust people that are mentors and know what they're talking about. Excellent advice. Um, somebody wants to know how they can donate to your ongoing efforts. How can they donate? GoFundMe.com slash team Mari water you can also you can find you can also find the link on my twitter which is little miss flint you can also find like the link and other stuff on my instagram which is little miss flint too or my web page which is literally just maricopany.com because you know gotta have a website up to me like yeah excellent thank you uh, somebody wants to know, Mari, what tips do you have for people to feel less shy about public speaking? Honestly, just just go for it. Like honestly, what Nike says, just do it. Like like you have to use your voice, and you have to like use your voice and try to spread awareness. Because 
the bigger, the bigger. Okay, it's like I gotta like try your sense. The, the the more you use the the more you use your voice, the bigger your platform is gonna get, and the and the bigger people, the bigger your platform gets, the more people that are gonna listen to you, the more people that are gonna notice you, the more the more you might you never know who might be watching. The, Important people may be, may be watching and like, you know, listening to you, but you'll never know it. You just got to build on your platform and use your voice because you'll get bigger and bigger. you expand throughout the, throughout the years and then boom. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, somebody wants to know a little bit more, more about the filters that you made uh, for the Flint residents, the water filters. Uh, they said it was such a good idea. Um, they want to know if the filters are free and how many were you able to distribute so far? Yes, they are in fact free. And I have distributed, distributed, I have distributed over a thousand so far, but I am pushing it to make it even more. Yeah, COVID slowed. Yeah, COVID slowed it down, so I couldn't do more. But I can guarantee you, I'm gonna do from to make up it. I'm gonna do way more. And I'm gonna get more out. Awesome. Uh, somebody wants to know, Mari, since we're in the pandemic and kids are stuck at home, uh, what are some of the tips you have for them and how to manage the pandemic and being at home all the time? Don't don't try to lose your mind. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm sorry. Just just have a try to have a positive mindset. I know it's kind of draining, but please try, please have a positive mindset. You know you don't want to be you don't you don't want to be stuck like quarantine like not even quarantine or you don't even want to be stuck with the pandemic with a bad mindset. It's, it's it's gonna emotionally drain you to the point where you don't want to do you you have no motivation to do anything. Trust me, I went through this during quarantine. You do, you do not want to have that. Just saying, like the motivation was so like you don't want to have like a low motivation because you're not gonna be able to get anything done or like do anything. Like say if you like okay for example say if you like if you love the draw so much like if you lost all your motivation you wouldn't do it anymore. That's kind of like that's that's you literally just don't want to like lose all motivation because you're gonna end up losing stuff that you like doing that you like doing on a daily basis. So like just like have a positive mindset. Don't lose motivation. Um. Stay in touch with your friends. You might, yeah. Um, you might learn new stuff. You might get new hobbies. Just like I, like I literally gained a new hobby during this, and I ended up learning how to play guitar, electric electric guitar to be exact. But like yeah, yeah. Just like you gotta sort of like I don't know how to explain it, but like yeah. What a great explanation Mari just gave there. Stay focused. Stay, stay focused. Yeah. Great okay. explanation there, Mari. Well, that was good advice. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Somebody wants to know, um, what is your advice for adults in terms of how we can best help to ensure your future? Would you make any changes in adults and what we can do to support you? Listen, 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 li just, li just, uh, just, just listen to the kids. That's all. Just, just listen to the kids. Don't try to bring them down. Just support them. Just listen to the kids. Please just listen to the kids. Even though we might sound crazy, just listen to us. We got this. Okay, somebody wants to know which civil civil rights leader would you want to have a chance to meet if you could and why? Okay, so I'm saying, okay, so if MLK was still alive, I would love to sit down and have a chat with him because very, he's a very inspirational man. And I do really love his family because I happen to know his one of his daughters, Bernice King, and his son too. And his granddaughter too. I, yeah, I remember meeting them a while back and yeah, and Bernice ended up falling in love with me. And like she's like one of my mentors, so like hence why I'm always learning new history about stuff. But like yeah, but if MLK was still alive, I would just love to sit down and have a talk with him about the current situations that are going on now. Excellent. Do you think he would give you some good advice? Yeah, he would for sure give out good advice. I mean, he always gives out good advice. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
advice, but Bridget gave me out, gave me out very good advice. For sure. Uh, since you just brought up the guitar, um, there's a young man out here who's 10 years old. He wants to know what your favorite song is to play on the guitar. Okay, so like, I'm still learning a few songs. I'm trying to learn the riffs and like stuff and stuff like that to like songs because you know, yeah, because you know, I kind of, I kind of want to, and I kind of have to, because I, I want to be cool. You know, I gotta be super swag. No, I'm kidding. I don't, don't I don't actually use that word. You gotta be super cool. But like, yeah. <laughs> I am so sorry. But like, yeah, I don't really like know any current songs on my guitar yet, but I'm I am most definitely learning. I'm learning though. Excellent. Uh, and then in terms of anime, somebody wants to know what is your favorite anime? I love these questions already. Alrighty. See, now I don't have just one favorite anime. I have a few. All right, let me name off a few. Okay, so one of my one of my favorite animes have to be Sailor Moon because that was the very first anime that got me into anime and all that. My second anim favorite anime had to be Haikyuu, that one volleyball anime, you know. Um, my third would have to be would have to be Soul Eater. I I desperately love that anime so much. I I literally love it. My of uh, the other anime that I would like would have to be like Gangrenopa, the game and the anime. Um, let's see. Um, I already said Sailor Moon. Um, uh, My Hero Academia, even though I'm like kind of like kind of, I'm kind of falling out of it until like new chapters, new new episodes get released. I'm kind of like, it, but it's kind of like one of my favorites. Um, let's see. Death Note, I desperately love that anime. Um, Elf and Lied, that one anime that I would recommend not watching that at like a very young age because it has a very, it has a lot of gore inside of it, but like, I used to my hero. Um, I do like horror anime, so like, another, like, the, no, 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 it's not a horror anime though, like, it's not a horror anime. It's called Another. It only has a few episodes, so, but it's called Another. Um, then like, more like the other side would be a Maduka Magical Girl, um, Sailor Moon again, because you know, I just can't because if you know Sailor Moon. Um there's way more, but like they're honestly, they they should have already flown at the top of my head, but they're just pushed back at the moment. So like there's way more. I just can't remember the names. But like, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. But my favorite would have to be Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon or Haiku. Alright, thank you. Um, someone wants to know, are you going to use your drawings or maybe your work with animation to promote your activism? Is there a way oh, that you course. can use those? Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. Have you done that already with your drawings? I actually haven't, but I'm start. I'm trying, I'm trying to. I just got, I just got to get on an art block first because, um, I, I cannot think of an art style right now. Like, yeah, and I'm on art block and I hate it desperately so much. It's to the point where I can't. Even though I think I'm gonna draw something, I cannot draw. I ended up, I ended up believing it because I hate it. After I get over art block, I'm gonna start using my drawings more about, with my activism and stuff like that. Okay, terrific. Oh, somebody wants to know: Do you have a role model? Okay, so one of my role models would have to be Yara Shahidi. She plays like blackish, you know, and, and like grownish, you know, shows like that. Yeah, she's like, she's like an older sister to me because we're really close and her mom literally loves me. So like, yeah, but like, um, yeah, she's like just one of my like biggest role models because she literally inspires me to do literally everything that I do. Oh, excellent. So when did you meet her? I met her so many times. We do a lot. Of, I do a lot of stuff at first. Like, I first met her in 2017, though. Yeah, it was at Team at the team, at, at the Team Vogue Summit. And then, and then we kind of like, then she kind of like recognized me and started like inviting me like her stuff, her events and stuff like that. And then we kind of like, then we, now we just do a lot together. 
Well, I'm sure she's another a person who can be a mentor to you, huh? Yeah. Terrific. So now that you've met President Obama, is there any other famous person that you'd like to meet in the next couple of years, maybe? Um, I got to meet the, huh? Oh yeah, I got to meet the, the, the remaining, the, the, the other remaining two living presidents, President Bush and President Carter. Yeah, like it, it, but like, other than that, I honestly don't know. I met so many people that I just, it's like, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, I wouldn't say it doesn't phase, I wouldn't say it doesn't phase me anymore, like, it honestly is like, it does not phase me anymore, it's like, it's just, it, it's, it feels like a, a daily thing, it's a, it's a normal thing, basically, pretty much, yeah, yeah. All right, excellent, somebody wants to know, um, if you like math, Mari. No. <laughs> next question. <laughs> now, anyway, next question. Okay. Um, let's see. Now you've had so many successes, Mari. Would you ever say though that you've had something that didn't quite go your way? How did you continue to push forward and move through that? Do you have an uh, No. I don't have an example. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so I. My mind is my mind is is kind of blank right now. It's like everything is kind of hard to say right now. I think when you were first starting, it was really hard to pull off the events as big as you wanted them. Oh, see, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, I don't think you ever like failed. Or... Yeah, I don't think I like ever failed. Is that what? No. No, I have not. Okay. I always fall though. Like, yeah. Yeah, so you, you mentioned skateboarding. Do you ever fall off your skateboard? <laughs> oh yeah, I ha I have. I I have in fact fell off of it. I have I have very good balance, so, like I shouldn't be able to fall off of it. But, like I remember I ended up trying to hit a trick and that was I was writing it and then like let let's give a brief demonstration real quick. Okay, these are my legs. This is the skateboard. I was like this. Ended up going like this because I was crouching down. And I put, this is my hand. I put my hand down and I went like, and I fell off and I scraped my whole side of my leg, preferably my knee. And it, 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 it was bleeding for the longest. And it, it, it like, it, okay, it's, it's finally healed, but like, there's a giant scar slash mark on my knee and I hate it. But my fault, though. So you just get back on and keep riding yeah. the skateboard, huh? Well, like, after that, I just, like, I just, like, I don't want to ride this anymore until, this, until my knee stops hurting because my knee was in pain. I was in desperate pain. Pain. Literally pain. But, like, now, like, I still ride it, but, like, I can't because, like, it's snowing outside and it needs to stop. Like, I, I definitely need to stop. I'm tired of it. All right. Um, somebody wants to know, what are your strategies for managing your time? You're so busy. How do you keep everything organized and manage your time? My mom helps me a lot, so that's kind of why I'm very organized. Because without her, I, it would I wouldn't be a living mess. Just saying. I can I can't even keep anything organized. So like, she helps me. All right, somebody wants to know, if you could be president for one week, what do you think you would focus on if you only had one week? Clean water. Clean water and racism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Do you like to travel, uh, Mari, when we're not in the pandemic? Yeah, I used to travel a lot. Like, I definitely, like, used to, like, I used to travel a lot. Like, every single week, I'd, I'd be in a new, I'd, new, new state, every, every new, every new week, every two weeks, every two weeks. But, like, I kind of, like, can't anymore, because, you know, stupid Rona, this Rona needs a stupid pandemic. But, like, yeah. Is there some place you really want to go once we get out of the pandemic? Okay, it's, so, like, one place. Um, I, one place I want to go back to, like, two places I want to go back to is San Francisco, because, you know, it's very pretty. 
In LA, of course. In LA. But like those are the two I want to go back to, but preferably LA. But San Francisco is very pretty though. Very pretty, but too many hills. But I want to go back to LA though. It's very fun. Excellent. Well, we're getting to the end of our time, Mari. I wanted to see if you had any kind of closing thoughts for us as we get ready to wrap up. Um, just, just, uh, you, you, you can change the road and don't forget to vote for, do not forget to vote for, and do not forget to vote free in 2044 for president. But, but that's, but, but that's if, but that's if you're alive. <laughs> I'm kidding, please. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, but like, please do vote for me president in 2044 though. Literally. Like, even like, please. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Very smart there, Mari. Well, we've got a couple of people in our uh, comments here who said they're definitely going to vote for you. Yay! And they've marked their calendars, and they're going to vote for you. And somebody else says they would love it if you came to the University of Michigan when it's time for college. We'll see. Are you already thinking about college, Mari, where you might want to go? No, not yet. I'm I'm too young for all that. Even though I'm still 13, I'm a little bit too young. Even though I'm still 13, I'm a little bit too young for that. Maybe when I turn 15, I'll start thinking about it. I, 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 give, it, I give it two years. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mari. We had a great time um, learning from you and getting inspired. We so appreciate it. Um, Thanks to everybody who joined the webinar. Um, engaging with Mari was certainly a highlight for me today. And I do want to remind you that we have one more MLK event that's going to be on Wednesday, January 27th with Dr. Brianka Merritt. She's going to be talking about community engaged research and uh, health equity, health disparities uh, in her role as the chief equity officer for the university, or rather for the state of Indiana. So we hope you can tune into that. Um, you can go to our uh, homepage, uh, isr.umich.edu, and get all the details that will be at 2 o'clock, 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, webinar. So thanks again, Mari, for joining us. Thank you to Mari's mom, who's been in the wings, helping out uh, during the presentation. Really appreciate it. And hope you have a great rest of the day and enjoy your MLK uh, day. And thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.